Imagine yourself communicating with a difference. Pandimensional Solutions helps you do this. Whether live spectator events, taped broadcasts, or real-time audience-engaging programs, you can benefit immediately from the tools Pandimensional Solutions will share with you. Do you want to make a difference? Contact us at pandimensional.com. Welcome, everyone, to this edition of the State of Greater Western New York Report. Join us each episode as we discuss fantastic topics ranging from history to science to the strange and the wonderful, as well as the treasured spirit with which our region has infused America. We challenge you to consider all things Greater Western New York, from our region's very beginnings to how it inspires, how it empowers, and why it is so admired. Here's the host of the State of Greater Western New York Report, Chris Carosa. Hi, everybody, and welcome again to a fantastic week in the state of Greater Western New York. And we're going to be telling you about something this week that is amazing. It's interesting. It's what a lot of people like this time of year. What is it? It's called maple syrup. Yes, the Western New York Maple Producers Association or Society or group or whatever. Uh, we have a couple of people from them. on. They're going to tell us all about the making of maple syrup. And as you know, there have often been places where you can go and get the maple syrup and actually eat pancakes. And there's me, uh, that's not, I'm not the maple producers, but you know who is the maple producers? These guys are the maple producers. A couple of maple producers are with me today. With me is both uh, Greg Zimpler and, of Zimpler Maple Products and Todd Hoffines. Did I get that right, Hoffines of Many Moon Farms? They're going to tell us a little maple. bit about the maple, maple, right? <laughs> maple moon fires. You know, I got the M's all mixed up there. So this is great when it's live. You get to have these sort of things go on and everyone gets to see uh, the host do crazy things. So let's start with, uh, let's start with Todd, since you're, you're there on the left. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your production and maybe, you know, how long have you been in business? Where are you located? That sort of thing. I'll throw it up with, a couple of pictures you might be able to describe too. Sure, Chris, thanks for having me on. Uh, my name is Todd Hoffines from Maple Moon Farms. We are located in Northern uh, Wyoming County in the great town of uh, Attica. Uh, we've been making syrup now for a little over 10 years. Uh, started out with a couple taps when my uh, daughter asked where syrup had been made, where, where it came from and how it was made. And then, uh, over time, we quickly expanded up to 1,500 taps. Not a lot for this this area in Western New York, but enough uh, keeps me on my toes and uh, certainly uh, enjoy doing what we do. Um, we made around 580 gallons of syrup this year, um, 220 off of our goal. Um, where we have terrific customers and a outpouring of support for the different events that we do attend where we sell our product. Um, looking forward to getting back to normal with uh, festivities and fairs and uh, hoping to reach out to more and more people to keep pushing our products. So we're very fortunate to have what we do. We have a couple of pictures here. If you can tell us a little bit about them. That was a picture I shot last fall, uh, just a gorgeous setting, sunrise. Uh, I was heading to the woods that morning and it just stopped me in my tracks as the sun came up and hit those beautiful sugar maple trees uh, in our in our woods. That was uh, back in February this year when we uh, started tapping. We, we tapped trees this year around uh, February 15th and 16th. And again, if I take a picture, it usually has purpose. It was just a quiet, beautiful morning to take that shot. If you notice in the uh, upper portion of that, that was a full moon back in uh, February. Absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous evening. And I said, I got to take that picture. That was unfortunately snow was starting to melt middle of the season. It was going to be another beautiful day, warming up quickly and sap was starting to flow. All right. Thanks a lot, Todd. So let's let's uh, pitch it over now to uh, to Greg. Greg, tell us a little bit about where you're from and uh, what your facility is all about. Thanks, Chris. 
Um, I'm Greg Zimfer. I'm actually almost Todd's neighbor. I'm still in Attica, northern Wyoming County. I started making maple syrup actually in the town of West Seneca in the mid-70s. And about 25 years ago, I moved to Attica, started making syrup a little bit more space and a few more trees. I've got about 560 taps. Uh, we made about 170 gallons this year. Not quite what we normally make, but not a terrible season for the weather conditions. We, what's this? Uh, what's this a picture of? That's a picture of my house. Um, it's actually a couple years old, but the snow this year was quite a bit deeper around the sugar house than that. We didn't have a lot of snow in January, February, and then. It actually got in the syrup season. The snow got rather deep, so that wasn't the worst thing in the world, but it all went away in a hurry, which is kind of made for a shorter season. So, let, yeah, actually, let's talk about that because a lot of people wonder, what is the season? What is typically the maple syrup season in western New York? How long does it last? People start tapping anywhere typically after the first of the year. Um, Todd, you tapped mid-February. I tapped at the very end of February. And this year, we all basically finished a week ago, a few days. Um, it's when the weather quits freezing at night and stays warm during the day. The buds will start to come out on the trees, and at that point, we're kind of done. So last night's snow was kind of too late for everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Unfortunately, yes. Yeah. Week yeah. Yes. So, Todd, how uh, typically how much syrup do you make in a season, and and how do you distribute it? Well, we our, our goal is always set high. Uh, we're looking for a half gallon per per tap, which would be seven hundred and fifty gallons. Um, I shoot for eight hundred every year. Uh, my parents always said, set your goals high. <laughs> <laughs> We've still never reached 800, but we're always trying. Um, our our big market is it's it, the product sells itself. We we started small, like I had mentioned earlier, um, and sold out of syrup. So we started tapping more trees. We bought more property. Um, we typically have a very good. Um, we're, we're successful for Maple Weekends. We just finished up last weekend with our uh, fourth day of, of Maple Weekend. I know the state didn't promote it this year, but we were still selling product. We have product available year round. Um, Genesee County Fair, Erie County Fair, and Wyoming County Fair, as well as State Fair, uh, is a good good outlet for our, our syrup. And I think Greg would agree with that for himself as well. Uh, but then just locally, people, Facebook message us or text or call and say, hey, I'm looking for syrup. People occasionally stop in with our roadside stand that we have and uh, we move a lot of product that way. So usually around Christmas time, we sell out, which is awesome. And then uh, we're ready to go, hopefully by the first of the year to start making more syrup. Excellent. Greg, what about you? How do you uh, typically, how much do you make and how do you distribute your products? Um. I tend to set my goals slightly lower than Todd with only 560 taps. I My goal is about 250. And usually I end up around 230 or so. This year we came up a little short of that. Uh, distributing products, like Todd said, Erie County, Wyoming, the State Fair are awesome venues. And then I also do a lot of craft shows anywhere throughout New York, all the way down into Georgia, Carolinas, places like that. Uh, it's fun meeting with the people and talking directly with the consumer. Sell out of the house. If people show up at the house, then we can sell them syrup there too. And then, like Todd said, the last two weekends, we've had our Maple Weekend. And it's fun to have the people come and show them what happens and show them what the tubing in the woods looks like. Yeah, we'll get to that in a moment. We actually have some video taken from, I think, a few years ago, so you will not see people being socially distant at this point, but uh, it'll be interesting. We'll go through that in a moment, but uh, Greg, you said something that kind of 
caught my caught my ear, and that is going out of state. To what extent is maple syrup, New York maple syrup, Western New York maple syrup, known throughout the country? Probably not extremely well known. Um, generally, the world, when they think of maple syrup, they think of the state of Vermont. But they do know maple syrup, and they very much enjoy maple syrup. They don't have hardly any direct contact with the producer. So when you go out of state, they really enjoy meeting you, talking with you, and buying product, getting to try the product and take it home with Do you do any out-of-state work, Todd, or are you all pretty much uh, in the local neighborhood, so to speak, or you know, within the state? I do not go to the shows out of state, but we ship a lot of syrup out of state, yes. Uh, we're actually, we've had people from Germany comp contact us, so we've sent uh, syrup to Germany, which is neat. Um, it's made it to California, Colorado, a lot in Texas. Um, just friends and family and people that contact us through Facebook, uh, we're, we're happy to ship. So what, what's the German word for syrup? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Probably good. Yes. Actually, here, here's a question that, that uh, we had Belgian waffles this weekend for Palm Sunday. I don't know if that's a tradition or not, but everyone in my family likes Belgian waffles. And of course, we put good old fashioned Western New York maple syrup on those Belgian waffles. But we had a debate within the family. Is it pronounced syrup or syrup? What do you guys think about this? I've always said maple syrup. Uh, syrup sounds like people in Vermont. Uh, if you ever watch any YouTube videos from up there, they're, that's how they say it, syrup. But I've always said syrup. How about you, Greg? Yeah, I agree with Todd. The same. So syrup. So I should be pronouncing it syrup, not syrup. Syrup. It's going to be tough. I was brought up on syrup, and I'm not from Vermont. I'm from Blaisdell. So uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's interesting the way we go with all those things. So this this year, uh, it it was a little bit of a challenge on on how people would come in. Did you have a special arrangement? Uh, I think this would be for you, Greg, since you would normally have people in. Did you have a special arrangement for? accommodating people who would come in it was is it like a restaurant where they just come pick up the bag and then take off um, what i did was a couple of things one i set up two sales areas one just outside the sugar house so that they were outside and a little bit more socially distant then i also have a year-round store over at my house so i had that set up so that put the crowd in basically four places at one time. They had the two stores, they had a tour in the sugar house and then a tour in the woods. So it severely spread the crowd out. And I think Todd's situation is similar in that his sugar house and where he sells are very different areas. So it helps spread people out. We did make people, you know, you had to wear masks, do all the social distancing things that are normal or have become our normal now. So Todd, the same thing with you? you, you had people split up like that? Uh, we gave them the option. They came in the shop, uh, the sh shop that the farm shop, we call it. Um, we did have a food stand in there from a local church group. Um, we just couldn't do indoor dining like we normally do. They had to take their uh, pancakes, pulled pork, uh, what else they have? Chili, all had to be to go. Um, again, we did social distancing. If people didn't want to show up and they called us later, that was fine too. We did have quite a few people order and pick up prior to the event. Uh, when we took tours to the woods with the wagon and the tractor, uh, we just asked people to wear their masks and say socially distant if uh, possible, if and when. Um, so we made it work. We had to. That's right. Good old ingenuity always takes care of things. All right, we're going to take a break now. When we come back, we're going to be talking about the actual process of making the syrup. Again, you're listening to the State of Greater Western New York report, or you may be watching it. Either case, you're here and we'll be right back. 
Through the mists of time, nature and man have both created and buried treasures beyond the imagination. With the ages, these riches slowly dissolve into mere myths until they are forever forgotten. But there are those brave souls who tirelessly cling to the truth, ever seeking to discover the undiscovered, to reveal what has always been there, to uncover the hidden gems of a land thought forsaken, but loved by millions. Fifty Hidden Gems of Greater Western New York. Discover the secrets in your own backyard. Buy your copy now at 50hiddengems.com. Welcome back to the State of Western, Greater Western New York report. Again, this week we are featuring the Western New York maple producers. These are the folks who put that delicious syrup on your breakfast table maybe dinner table too, depending on how adaptable you are or brunch or anytime, anytime you could use a record. If you want to, if you want to check them out, you can go to wnymaple.com. That's their website. And if you scroll down the website, which you see here, the front page, you'll be able to take a look at all the different maple producers in the various Western New York counties. And it's all, they actually have 15 of the 17 that we normally include. They're leaving out Seneca. And Shemang, but that's okay. That's okay. They're right on the border there. So check it out, wnymaple.com, and find your favorite place to get maple syrup. Well, with me now are a couple of maple syrup producers, and they told us a little bit about their business. Let's go over and let's have Greg uh, take the handle on this one. Let's let's look at this video of what it looks like to actually produce maple syrup. Let us know who these folks are and what they're doing as they make the maple syrup. That's a picture a few years ago of Eric Randall. He's uh, getting ready here to tap a tree. In a minute, we'll see him tapping a tree. Uh, basically, you drill a hole about an inch and three quarters deep. Um, that's probably a 7 16 diameter hole. And once you've drilled the hole, you put a spout it into the hole, which he's doing right now. You tap it in gently. And in this case, he for a bucket rather than plastic tubing. And there's a picture of the sap dripping out of the tree. Is it usually that slow? It's about that. That's actually a pretty good run for sap coming out. There he is. He's firing his evaporator. And if you're going to run wood fire, Todd does, or in this case, as Eric does, you definitely want a really hot fire, and you go through a fair amount of wood doing that. Picture the evaporator. It's just boiling away, a little steam coming off of it. And there's some syrup boiling. It looks like it's in the back pan because it looks a little on the thin side. And Eric's checking his syrup to see just exactly what's going on and making sure he's not burning anything. What was that he squirted in there? It's a touch of defomer. Um, basically syrup, because it's got a lot of sugar, tends to foam up when you boil it. And it'll foam up to the point where you can actually burn the pan. So you have to keep the foam a little bit under control. And what he's doing now is he's checking a sample of finished syrup make sure that it's the correct density. The syrup, in order to be sold, has to be between 66 and 67 bricks of density. And he's getting ready here to filter some syrup and then can it.
you know, filtering it, you want to get all the impurities, any little bits of niter or anything that may be in it cleaned out of it. Make sure that syrup's all nice and clean and clear and no imperfections in it right before you bottle it to go to the consumer. And there is some crystal clear, pretty syrup. This is a shot from down to Merle Maple Farm. I'm thinking it's about 10 or 11 years old, but it's from one of the maple open houses. And someone is starting to give a tour and show people how you tap a tree. lines up you'll see the large inch line and then going on and then you get to the tree so what are we going to do when we get to the tree well we're going to tap it. And this is a picture of a uh, tennis ball cannon that they have set up on open house something for people to shoot and play around with firing it's just as an air cannon shooting tennis balls and a picture of the horses out giving, giving rides. Yeah, it looks like some people and customers looking for some baked goods. Yeah. So it looks like it was a, it was a lot of fun. And you guys... Did you guys miss that? You know, the last couple of years was it, isn't a lot of fun having people come out there. Oh, it definitely is. So let's talk about what what what's going on right now. So the season is ending. You know, Todd, how do you how do you determine when the season ends exactly? I mean, is it uh, is it guesswork or is there something precisely with the temperature that tells you? Actually, Chris, it's it's when the buds come out, the season's over. Uh, I know everybody enjoyed those warmer temperatures uh, a week ago, and the maple producers had a tear in their eye saying, no, it's too early for it to be this warm. The sap starts to get buddy. It's, it's bitter. Uh, you can tell by taste when it's over. Uh, we went until Saturday morning last week, so it'd be the 27th of March is when we stopped collecting sap. Um, the, the sap tastes off, and we don't want that for the consumer. So we, we stop collecting, and then you go into cleanup mode. And um, it's unfortunate because, like you said, it was snowing last night. It's snowing a little on and off today. That's what we needed last week instead of those upper 60, 70 degree temps just too warm for March. <laughs> well, I'm sure a lot of people did like those temperatures, but but not the maple syrup growers. We have uh, people who are listening live now on Zoom. If you have a question that you'd like to ask our maple syrup, syrup growers, sorry, uh, please use the chat room to ask the question and I'll relay it over uh, to, to either Greg or Todd. So Greg, why, why don't you tell us in, what has been your biggest surprise when you go through this maple syrup creation? What what what's maybe easier than you thought, or maybe what's harder than you than you initially thought? What 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 thing kind of an experienced person like you? What what surprises you today? Probably not something. What I started making syrup that I thought a lot about, but. It's something that's become an absolute realization now that we have very, very little control. It is so up to Mother Nature and the weather that, like, it's March and we had 70 degree weather. I mean, that's not anything we can control. You're in the middle of making syrup and it just kind of ends on you. I mean, making beautiful syrup one day and you head to buddy syrup the next day. Nothing you can do to control. And unfortunately, that is very true of agriculture in general that there's so little you can actually control what happens 
So the warmest March, I think I heard today that the warmest March was 2012. What do you think, uh, what do you think was the earliest that the season ended for you guys? Either one of you remember, Greg or, or Todd? Yeah, Chris, it was definitely 2012. It was 80 degrees on Maple Weekend. Uh, oh, we weren't really? yeah. fighting snow drift. It was, it was my daughter's birthday, the 22nd of March. And uh, we weren't fighting snow drifts. We were fighting bugs. The, the little black gnats were out. The mosquitoes were out. People still came and took the tour. Um, I think that was the earliest one for us. But again, we've only been in it 10 years. Right. Uh, maybe Greg can remember one sooner, but 2012 was tough to forget that day. Can you remember any other going? Uh, yeah, two, go ahead, Greg. 2012, I still think is the earliest we've ever finished. How about the, how about the longest? I remember a couple of years ago we had a snowstorm on Mother's Day in May. I don't know what the weather was before that, but well, what was the longest that you guys remember the season ever going? Greg, why don't you take that first, since uh, Todd took the other one first. I think I've boiled to almost the 20th of April before. It's been quite a few years, but we have made it that far, and it's been a long time. Now, I agree with that number, too, Greg. <laughs> that was April 20th. I have it in my book. Just don't remember the year. Oh, all right. So let's talk about products now. So there's the maple syrup that you buy in the jug. What other sort of maple products do you guys produce? We only do the syrup, cream, and candy. Um, we do have a home processor permit for the uh, coated maple nuts and coated cashews, but that's about it. I know uh, Greg takes it a little bit farther. Um, Greg, why don't you pick up from there? Cause... It. It sort of falls into a strange situation because on my own, I typically make basically the exact same products uh, Todd is, but I also work for Merle Maple Farm, which was one of your, the videos you showed there. And we also do uh, maple mustards, barbecue sauces, hot sauces, uh, maple chocolate covered candies and stuff like that. So we've got a lot larger line of other value added products also have so pretty much if you can come up with an idea we could probably make it out of maple so beyond the syrup what's the most popular maple product that you've seen is it the candy or is it uh is it something else i would think the candy is one of the most popular products maple cream is extremely popular is there any is there any recipes, special recipes that people use that involve maple syrup that it goes beyond the traditional putting it on top of the pancake or waffle? Chris, we like to add it to our spaghetti sauce, pizza sauce, oh. and uh, the church group makes a phenomenal maple chili for Maple Weekend every year that people actually message us for it saying, can I get a gallon of it rather than a cup? So. <laughs> I've always said maple's more than just for breakfast. We we do a lot of cooking with it. Um, just another another venue for maple. Well, we're coming up pretty much to the end of the show. Uh, Greg, do you have any last words that you'd want to share with the audience? Um, come visit me and Todd. We've been more than willing, willing to show you around. If you got want some product, I'm sure we both have plenty available. All right. Well, Todd, Greg, thank you very much for being here. And I'm telling you, I think I want pancakes right now. I'm tasting that maple syrup in my mouth. And thank you all for watching this week's episode of the State of Greater Western New York Report. Remember, we're here each week and you can see us live if you'd like, simply by going to our website, stateof.greaterwesternnewyork.com and signing up. And we'll send you the instructions to watch the Zoom shows live so that you can interact and ask your own questions which i know a lot of people like to do that's our website state of dot greater western new york dot com just go there sign up we'll send you the links and you'll be off to the races watching each week's episode 
of the State of Greater Western New York report. Well, this is Chris Carosa signing off for this week's version of State of Greater Western New York report. Bye-bye for now. Thank you.